It's split in the yeah, plus. Yeah. Do what? <laughs> this is what we're looking at, right? We, I know it's hard for us to see. We have a function. So, so this piece right here. Sorry, it's right on top of it, actually. It's perfect. Um, sine x dx is my p of x, y dx. Plus, q of x, y is my cosine y, and dy is the dy. So I'm splitting that into these two. This one and this one. So why is the dy in the first one? Why is the dy in which one? Oh, that's what was given in the problem. Uh, I'm not. I still don't think I'm making. Okay, let me let me back up. Let me back up for a second. Okay, this is the original problem, right? We could have, if we wanted to, we could have written it this way to start the problem. Integral over c sine x dx plus integral over c of cosine y dy. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Now. This one would split into two pieces, wouldn't it? Because you have to go over C1 and C2. This one over C1 is this piece. Over C2, it's going to be over this one. It's the same thing. No matter how you do it, we're going to get to the same place. Do you see that? Yeah. OK. This is good. What am I missing? The cosine t. Cosine t. dt. Then. Plus, now I've got to do this one. The difference between this one and that one is we're on a different curve now. Is that, is that a hand, Kieran? No. OK. So I guess I'll continue below this. Is that all right? Or above it? What do you want? Below? OK, plus integral. Now, for C2, where am I going from? 0 to 1. Right? 0 to 1. Co uh, sine of x. Sine of what was x? Negative 1 minus t. dx. What was dx? Just negative 1. So times negative 1 dt. Do you all have any questions on where this is coming from? Because I've erased most of this from the board already. No? Plus integral 0 to 1 again. This time I'm doing cosine y dy. So cosine of what was y? 3t. And dy was 3, so 3 dt. So everything you see there would now need to be integrated, right? How would you do this one right here? U Basic u sub. u is cosine t. The derivative of it is out here, kind of. Well, actually, negative, yeah. So that's just going to turn out to be like negative cosine of, cosine of t or something like that. Anyway, it's, it's doable. This one over here, same story. Let u be sine t. Derivatives out here. That'll work. This one, yeah, that works pretty clean. And this one's pretty clean. So they're all very doable integrals. OK? So dot, dot, dot. So can we put this in the fun category? No? You'd rather do this in triple integrals? Yeah. All right, so let's talk about paths for a second. Orientations of paths. What happens if we change the orientation of a path? In other words, what happens if we traverse the path backwards? So like when we were drawing that, that uh, the one I've been doing for a few examples now, cosine t, sine t, right? and t being from 0 to pi, let's say, then that drew this upper half, and it drew it in that direction, right? Start at 0, go. 
But what about if I drew it the other way? Like, so what if we go the other direction? Like this way. Well, I'm not talking about, right now I'm not talking about how would we do it. I'm saying, do you think it changes the value of the line integral? What does your gut tell you? No? What was the curve on the ground? What part of that rectangle was it? Curve on the ground? That little, that little piece right there? Wasn't that just the base of the rectangle? And we said it was arc length, right? Arc length should be a positive number, shouldn't it? It's the length of this arc. Square root of derivative squared plus derivative squared, that's always going to be a positive number, right? So if I go one way versus the other, it should not have an impact on my line integral with respect to arc length. But do you have any idea how we would draw this backwards? How, how we would actually start here and go to here? Let's try something. Um, when, I, when I'm at zero, where do I, sorry, when I plug in zero, where do I need to be? I need to be on this side, right? So I need the angle to be pi. And when I plug in pi, I need the angle to be 0. Any idea? What do you mean, like change sine on top and cosine? You want x to be sine t and y to be cosine t? Let me try that after I try this one. That may work. How about this? Tell me if this works. Will this work? I don't think so. Let me try it. What happens? We plug in zero. Isn't that basically no. what he said to begin with? Uh, yeah, but hold on. If I plug in zero, yeah, yeah. what's going to happen? Uh, I'm going to get cosine pi, sine pi, right? Now, what if I plug in something in between, like pi over 2? Where will I be? Pi over 2, pi over 2? And then if I plug in pi, I'm going to get 0 and 0. I think that's going to work. So that should draw it backwards. Now, the other suggestion, I don't think that's what you were suggesting, right? You were suggesting just switch them completely, right? Like this. Is that right? And keep the restriction between 0 and pi? Is that or no? Right? Now, will this work? Plug in 0. Where are you at at 0? You're at 0 for the x coordinate and 1 for the y, so you'd be up here. So I'm, you see, I don't think that would work. Unless you want to adjust this. Pi to 0? Well, you can't go pi before 0. What's sign of? OK, look, what, what we need is that if I want to draw the circle this way, I need that when you plug in 0, you're here. You see? And I don't think that'll do it, because sine of 0 would be 0, and that means your x coordinate is 0. So you're starting here, and your y coordinate is 1. So you're starting here. You could change, yes, you could change this. There are many ways we could do it, OK? There are many ways we could do it. This is one way. There may be another way. The question is, does it matter if we change it? Yes? Sine of t plus, one, uh, t plus pi. Sine of t plus pi, right here. And what about this one? Leave it? Or t Maybe plus pi? You know, this is something you should just play with it yourself. I mean, you should see if you can come up with something on your own. Most of the things I'm going to have you do uh, parameterizations of are pretty straightforward. I'm not going to ask you to go some weird, unless it's a take home. OK. All right, so here's, some, here's, some, here's the result when it comes to integrating over a curve backwards. Oh, I didn't show you the notation there. I didn't point it out. 
If I start, if I'm going to go from A to B and traverse it C, notice the difference in the traversing of those? They're reversed. Then we call this path C. Going the opposite direction, we call that path negative C. Right, so that negative means don't, it's not a negative number. It's just going in that, um, along that path backwards. So if you have a line integral right, over C with respect to x, not arc length, then if you go backwards, <coughs> you change the sign. Your answer will be off by, it'll be, be the same answer but negative. Or if it was negative, it'll be positive now. If you do it with respect to y and you change the path backwards, then it also changes the sign. But if it's with respect to arc length, there is no difference. Path independence. So let's just say that somebody gives you two points. All right, someone gives you two points, A and B. Then I could go along path C and get from A to B. Or I could go along path C tilde. Right, the little squiggly on top, C tilde. They both take me from A to B, don't they? I wonder if the line integral changes if I go over a different path. What do you think? What's, what, do you, what do you think happens? If we choose two different paths getting us from one point to the, you know, connecting the same two points, we choose two different paths. Do you think that the, the, the value of the path integral, I should say line integral here, do you think the value of the line integral will change? Yes, yes. in general, it matters. This example right here is an example where we're going we're gonna to do two different curves C, one on a parabola and one on a line segment. And if you do those two different paths, you will get two different answers. And because of time, I don't think I'll have enough to do it, but I will set it up. What we're going to determine is two different answers. So the result <coughs> is going to be this. Given two points A and B, in general, the line integral depends on the path. We change the path, it's very likely the integral is going to change. But sometimes, under some conditions, the line integral does not matter. The path does not matter. And that is a very strong condition. And we will talk about that condition later on. Path independence. So let me help you set this one up. Do you, want, do you want like four minutes to set it up yourself first? I think you can do the line segment one. See if you can get the arc of the parabola. Also, um, I'm not doing, this is not a C1, C2, right? This is comparing two different C's that connect the same two points and comparing the two different answers as opposed to what we were doing before. So I'd like for you to come up with a parameterization for C, which will be this one, and a parameterization for C tilde, which will be this one. Is that a question?
we're just going to look at negative 22, is that it? Instead of negative 5, 0. That's been about four minutes. I'm going to assume everyone can do the second one, the line segment, because we've done now a couple of those. How about on that arc of the parabola? What do you all notice about that? X depends on Y. X is a function of Y. So whenever you see that, X is a function of Y. That means y is independent, right? It's free. So that's going to be what t is. y will be t. All right? So you let, you let y be t. So if this is t, then what's x? 4 minus t squared. Now you need to come up with the restriction on t. But t is the y value, isn't it? So what does your y value need to go, do? Well, it needs to go from negative 3 to 2, right? So negative 3 to 2, because it's your y value, not your x. So that'll be your parametrization over c. This is your parametrization over c tilde. And then you go through and you compute these, right, for each one. And you should get different answers. But I don't have time. OK. Uh, so where are we headed? Um, this should, I believe, wrap it up for line integrals. What we start with next class is line integrals in space, <clears throat> which means, yes? How do you, get, how do you determine that t is some series line? For the line segment? It's always going to be 0 to 1. If you do it the way that I showed you, which is why I showed it to you that way, is because later on it would make this a lot easier. You just have to get it all in right order. Your r naught has to be the, where you're starting. And then your v, your direction vector, has to go from your starting point to your ending point. Then everything works out. It'll be 0, 1. So what we'll do next time is really not just a slight um, extension of this. It's harder to visualize, though, because in the, in the previous, in today, our C lived on the ground, our f of x, y lived up as a surface, and it was a curtain that we could kind of visualize. Next class, we do a line integral in space, meaning that our C lives in three-dimensional space. Our function is of x, y, and z. We can't see it. But we can still talk about it. See, it's not an area anymore because you don't have the visualization. But we can still talk about the integral over the, over the curve C of the scalar function with respect to arc length. And everything pretty much stays exactly the same. You have to come up with the parametrization for a three-dimensional curve, x, y, z this time. And then your, your uh, arc length just adds one more piece to it, and then everything else is pretty much the same. So that's where we're headed. Then we get into vector fields after that. OK. Everyone have a great rest of your day. I'll leave that up.